Now let us see what happens if there is a change in tax rates. If tax rates change, then do you think that there will be any change in the deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities that have been reported? If yes, then how much and how this will be incorporated? So we'll discuss all of these now. Let's take an example and we go back to an asset which has a carrying value of 900 and let's say the tax base is 600 and we assume that the original tax rate was 40 percent and the new tax rate is 30 percent. So what will be the effect on the deferred tax assets and liabilities? So let's take this case where the liability is created since this is an asset and the carrying value is 900 and tax base is 600 we have seen earlier that the deferred tax liability can be calculated as carrying value minus tax base multiplied by the tax rate so this will come out to be 900 minus 600 multiplied by 40 percent so this is 300 into 40 percent we have seen that earlier this comes equal to 120 as the deferred tax liability now let's assume that there was a new tax rate of 30 percent so what will happen in this case deferred tax liability should ideally be equal to 900 minus 600 multiplied by 30 percent so this is equal to 300 into 30 percent and that is basically 90 so deferred tax liability has actually reduced because of the reduction in tax rates. So let us quickly make the original balance sheet and the new balance sheet. There's an asset and the liabilities and uh, here the deferred tax liability was 120. Deferred tax liability is 120. Let's assume that the other set of liability that is shareholders equity was 80. So the liabilities is 200 here and let's assume that here current asset is 50 and the fixed assets is 150 so thereby total assets are equal to total liabilities so we note that the deferred tax liability is sitting pretty here at 120 now when there is a change in tax rates what happens here is that the liability position changes altogether so what ha we have is deferred tax liability will be 90 now shareholders equity original or the old one is basically 80 so if you look at this would become 170 and the asset side we have the current asset as 50 and the fixed asset as 150 so on the asset side we this is equal to 200 so there is essentially a mismatch of 30 between the two so how does that mismatch kind of reconciled so let's look at how this is done the difference between the two that is 200 and 170 gets reconciled through the income statement so when we look at the income statement of the shareholders you'll find one item called income tax expense so this difference between 120 and 90 that is the difference is 30 this results in the reduction of this income tax expense so this income tax expense goes down by 30 to an extent of 120 minus 90 and what happens is this results in net income this moves up by 30 so and this net income is essentially linked to the shareholders equity section through the retained earnings so what happens is this shareholders equity new actually becomes 110 here and 90 plus 110 becomes 200 so this is how you know this uh, whole methodology of changes in tax rates is implemented you can do the same thing on deferred tax assets and try out a situation for yourself